Mail bag time, bunch of stuff here. I worked on things here for doing some repair work, so there'll be some videos from some of the stuff from this. But let's see what else we've got here. Don't forget to check out the links down below for any items. I'll open up this one. There's a few things I actually already opened because I thought there were other things. We were waiting for something to turn up so I could fix something, but it wasn't it. And links down below as well for items you may be interested in purchasing. So just these things. So there we go. These are some USB C, USB A modules. Now what are these? These are charge modules for lithium ion batteries. So there's obviously four of them here and it's basically got a charge indicator here. So you hook up a battery to this. You know, you see the battery symbol there. Negative and positive symbols there. And it will give you a state of charge indication. And also you've got a 5 volt output here which is also the same as these. It's the same connections I think. Have a look so you can see where it goes. Yeah, it's in parallel. So that's the same as using these sockets. So basically you make your own little um, battery pack sort of thing using USB connections. Thing is, I've actually forgotten why I bought them. I had a project in mind, which is why I got them. I just don't remember what that was now. Ah, remember now. I was working on a FarmTech timer which I was putting a battery pack into to convert it from being a powered, off a, like a power brick, to being battery powered and this was one of the options I was thinking about using was one of these modules with a 3.7 volt pack to step it up to 5 volts and so stepping up rather than stepping down to run off a 5 volt supply and bypass the original voltage regulator and just run it straight off this and this was a consideration and obviously with the charging ports means I could have mounted it out on the casing and just plug a USB connection in to charge it up that was one of my considerations I thought these could be useful for other things anyway since well I've got 10 of them they're not that expensive I have to excuse my desk, I have to try and clear a space because I'm currently working on this Mac Pro over here, this 2013 one. It's dead, I'm trying to fix that. May or may not be a video. It's not my normal one, I purchased this one as a second computer and then before the guy shipped it, he said, ah, oh, it's died, it's not working. So I said, well, I'll buy it anyway, but obviously for less money. So I've got it for a better price. I hope I can get it working because right now it's dead. Still working on it. So it may be a video. Alright, this is one of the other options I had for the FarmTech timer. It's actually strap one of these battery packs on the back and fill it with eight cells. Have an eight cell battery pack on the bottom of the timer. Then you can just use standard AA cells to run it. That was something I was really considering doing, plus it also had a power switch, which is really convenient. So I was going to do this originally, then the owner of the timer said, actually I prefer it if I had an internal battery pack, which is rechargeable. We prefer to recharge over AAs, even though AAs is more compatible, because at events and stuff like that, everybody's got AA batteries, because that's what all the gear runs from. So AA batteries would be more compatible. The problem with having a rechargeable device is that if it goes flat, you've got to charge it back up. Whereas these, you can just drop some more batteries in. But uh, this is what I was originally going to go with, was this. And I decided to go for an internal rechargeable battery instead, which worked out quite nicely in the end. Um, this would have been a little bit ugly, to be honest, but it would have done the job. So I already bought them, then I decided, actually, I'm going to go rechargeable. It's still a case. be useful for something one day. I'm not going to, maybe I won't use it right now, but I'll be using it at some point. Another package which I've already opened is a piece of polystyrene. Okay, it's one of these. It's a little adapter. Now, I got this for the HP 3406A because I didn't actually have a way of adapting from the probe that's on that thing to a BNC connector. And that's what this is. This is supposed to plug onto the existing probe to go to a BNC, so then you can hook up to other equipment. And I actually needed this to be able to calibrate that device because I couldn't calibrate it as it was. I had no decent connections on it. I had no way of actually being able to do a reliable enough connection to be able to do a calibration. So this is a lot, you can see the number there, 1250-0052. Rather expensive. I think there's still some of these on eBay right now. And they're really expensive. I needed this to be able to use that 3406A at all to even calibrate it and check its calibration as it was I couldn't do it. Needed a proper connector for it and that's what I've got this for. It was worth the expense to be able to get that thing adjusted and stuff. I may or may not do a video about that, I don't know yet. So can you guess where this has come from? Comments down below. Also before I forget, if you ever like my videos please share them. Right? Sharing the videos helps me to grow to a bigger audience more people get the chance to see the videos and maybe if there's something you think someone else would be interested in please share it because it does help the channel quite a lot also YouTube uses those sharing prompts to 
help decide whether you should be pushing the channel to more people or not as well. So if you share it, it's not just you sharing it, it also helps YouTube to decide to share it some more as well. So it does help the channel quite a bit, so if you could do that, that'd be great. Maybe think it's worthwhile, of course. So there's a few projects going on. MX 25L6406E M2I 12G 64 megabit flash, SPI flash, 86 megahertz apparently, 8 pin SOP. These are for something I'm trying to repair. Um, I've also got another one, I think. Is this it? Yes. 25C633 FM2, which is basically the same thing, just a different format, right? Basically, I'm not quite sure what the exact differences were between them, but anyway, this device is used in one of the items I've got. I've got two items which are identical, but they've got different flash chips on them. One is using this chip, and the other one's using this chip. Uh, I think this is the older one, so this might be like the newer version. I'm not quite sure. This one, I think this one was more expensive, this one was cheaper. So, what I'm actually working on is the Synology NAS. I'm recording a video about it. And what's happened is its internal flash has basically failed and it's corrupted and I cannot rewrite that flash. Now I actually have two of these NASes, one is mine, one is belongs to my dad actually. And he was using that NAS and it died. That's when I found out, hey, the flash is bad. Because I managed to hook into the serial communication on it and stuff like that and actually read the output from the serial and see that it's failing for a checksum. So I've got a NAS which is exactly the same. So I pulled my NAS apart, read the flash from it compared it to his one and we got different versions of the software on the flash which makes it different but then I put my flash chip into his NAS and it started so I know that if I copy my flash into his one it will work now I've actually found a way of adapting the serial number and the Mac ID basically my intention is to use the modified file which is based on my flash chip with his Mac ID and serial number in that flash to rewrite a chip and so I tried to rewrite the original chip and it wouldn't take it just kept failing and couldn't write it that's why I had to get some new chips so I think the flash is bad but I've got a bunch of them so what I'm probably going to do is figure out if it actually works is I might actually just do a couple of them and have a spare one already written and leave it inside the casing or something like that so if it goes next time I'm going to swap the chip out I'm going to expect the flash chip to die I think they're probably about 8 years old so I would have thought they'd last longer than that apparently not uh, what else have we got here we've got some MOSFETs p channel MOSFETs 30 volt maybe you can just see them in there because I didn't have any. So I was prompted by Johnny Fix because he was fixing some stuff and he needed some MOSFETs and I realised I don't actually have any of these in stock because I don't think I do. Maybe I should double check. Um, so these are just some generic PTR MOSFETs AON6407 and then in this bag here I've got some NCHAL MOSFETs um, which is AON6262E. It's a 60 volt 40 amps. It's an 8 DFN. And this is uh, 32 amps, 30 volts. So not quite the same spec, but I figured something's better than not having anything at all. Another package was opened, again, because I'm waiting for something to turn up. That's a bag of rubber band inside of another bag. With another rubber band. <laughs> Do you think they get in a bit ridiculous with the packaging? And it's basically this is another battery holder. Right, this is a six cell version. Obviously that's an eight cell. And same sort of situation with a switch on it as well. I just realised I didn't actually have any of these kind of battery packs. I had some like internal style ones, but not these the external ones. So again a bit like that. I think it's probably the same. At least I made sure that it didn't arrive damaged, I suppose. But a lot of unnecessary crappy. Well necessary packaging. Anyway, that one's exactly the same, another six cell one. Here we have two different ones. These are three cell packs instead. These are some four cells, I think. Yep, four cell ones. So this is a little charge module, well, charge status module. So you just hook up the battery and it gives you the capacity. Now this is actually adjustable. There's actually information on the purchase link for this which allows you to choose different batteries. So you can choose different battery types and so it will adjust the capacity rating depending on the voltage obviously. And depending on what you choose you'll get a different level. Did a few different battery types so it allows you to choose different ones but the information is on the link. So basically you hook up the battery, you push the test button and it will tell you the level on these LED as you push the button. I think it might stay on for a period of time, then it turn off again. I'm not sure. But that's why I got those, because I wanted something like this. 
I actually wanted it for that farm tech thing actually, but uh, already had some other ones which were just about compatible. It's barely good enough. These would have been perfect for it, but uh, I didn't want to wait for these to turn up. But now I've got some of these as well. So, but the good thing about these, say, these are adjustable. Now there might be a multi pack in this. Got some more modules, which is voltage in, voltage out. I think this was a boost module. I don't remember. It'll be links down below in the description. If you know where that is, I'm looking at it, put it down in the comments. Maybe you know already. It's voltage in, voltage out. I don't know which way it went. Whether it was boosting up or bucking down. I'm not quite sure. Someone will know. Oh well, the bag of more. <laughs> I think I might have been on a bit of a module thing. Alright, what's this one? It says on the back. Jumpers, that's right. It's adjustable. 5, 8, 9 or 12 volt output. With this fixed input, so this is a boost converter, and there it is 5, 8, 9, or 12 volt. There, being on the jumpers A or B marking being made determines what the voltage is. So, there's those jumpers that's there. So, depending on what you do with those jumpers, it determines the output voltage. So, I think this is like a boost from a 3.7 volt cell. Again, this is something I was thinking about using for that farm tech timer, putting this in there to boost the voltage up from a lower voltage pack. I could have used a 3.7 volt pack and boosted it up with this to 5 volts or 8 volts. To do the job in the end I didn't need it but I'll need it for something so I don't regret buying them there's been times I wish I had something like this so I finally got around to getting some still a couple of things to go so it's like a little storage bin storing parts in. now I got this for when I'm at events I do that obviously the farm tech repair stuff right when I'm at events, sometimes I get asked to fix these things. I'm required to fix these things because there's one which is failing or giving trouble. and So it's best if I can fix it at the event, then take it away and record video about doing it. And it's just usually a bit easier. I wanted to have a parts bin where I could keep stuff, you know, the common repair parts. I need like screens and read relays and bits and pieces like that, LEDs and what have you. I thought this would be a good little option for that. I should be able to get all these parts easily in here and use this to store them all in, in a nice organised way. Really did be cheap, wasn't that expensive? And it seems to be okay. It's polypropylene or something I think. Does it actually say what it is? Yeah, PP. Anyway, but yeah, it's polypropylene, so it's fairly robust. You know, you can give up polypropylene a bit of a hard time. And it's pretty strong. I say that and I can see it's got a crack in it, just here. <laughs> got a small crack in it, just up there. Must have been stood on or something in the post. Anyway, it is fairly robust. That's not a big deal. The thing is, with polypropylene, you can't glue it. The only thing you can do to fix it is to basically melt it, melt it back together again. So, all I have to really do with this is just get the hot air station on it, maybe and just melt that a little bit, or maybe in soldering iron and just fill that. You can't glue polypropylene nylons. Polyolefins, you can't glue them. I'm actually hoping this is one of the things I've been waiting for. It may not be, but I'm hoping it is. Oh, looks like it might be. Brilliant. Gotta be careful with this. At least it's in a static proof bag. Well, it appears to be a static proof bag since it's pink, you know. That's the convention. But is it really? I don't know. I'm not going to get it out, you should be able to see it through the bag. CPU. Now, can we see the model number? It's a uh, E52697V2, 2.7 gigahertz. I mean, this is relatively old CPU, but it's for the Mac Pro got sitting over here, which I'm trying to fix. Now, I ordered this before I got this computer, but at the time, this computer was supposed to be a working computer, and the idea was I was going to use this to upgrade it. And now, in a situation where the computer doesn't work, <laughs> so, a bit different. I'm hoping the CPU is also actually wrong with it because the original CPU looks dodgy. This doesn't look right, I'll show you. So, there it is, there, and it's got this rough spot just here, and there's this bit here as well. It's almost like it's got a hole there, see that? It's like a hole, and there, as though it's welded itself to the casing and gone right through. Now, I actually had an issue with it being damaging the heatsink very slightly too. It's got a bit of a rough spot there, which I managed to clean up basically okay. But this makes you think that the CPU has failed 
and welded itself to the casing because what else would cause that? Anyway. Click subscribe right now, quick, before you forget. Don't forget to check out the links down below. Also check out the other videos, there's other things you could watch which are, you probably find interesting, such as the electronic repair videos, could be something specifically there you want, you know, certain piece of test gear I do repair on, or other mailbag videos if you like these sorts of formats, and I've got loads of these mailbag videos you can go through, find links to various products that I've featured in the past, obviously product reviews as well, I view stuff. Subscribe right there, Patreon support link over there if you want to help support the channel, and help me to buy things for mailbag or bits of test equipment to fix, really does help, and thanks a lot to my Patreon supporters and my YouTube members who do help to contribute to the channel, and help me to buy things, it does actually make a difference. This channel is expensive to run, it costs me a lot of money, not because of mailbag, but because generally to buy bits of test equipment, I'm spending thousands of dollars to buy one thing, it's getting ridiculous, anyway, catch you later.